Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's try to find the Fourier series of this function. It's called the sawtooth wave function. Notice it looks just like a sawtooth, and the pair is equal to t, the amplitude is equal to a, and notice it repeats on both sides of the vertical axis. Also notice that f, the frequency is 1 over the period, and the angular frequency is 2 pi f, therefore 2 pi over the period. Now notice I indicated that this is kind of like an odd function, not quite an odd function. An odd function, you should be able to take the right side of the, the wave, flip it over, then flip it over this way, and you should have the exact same image. But that's not the case. If you do that, notice you're not below the axis, so you don't have the exact same thing as you have over there. Except if you do this instead, if you take the line, where y equals a over 2, and you flip it this way, and then you flip it over, then you get the exact same image, image on the left side as you do on the right side. Wow, that kind of makes it out function, except normally in an out function, the DC term is eliminated, but in this case it is not, because you have to flip it over the line a over 2 instead of over the line y equals 0. That does mean that you have the constant term left, but you can then also eliminate a sub n and only keep b sub n, which makes the problem a little bit easier. So let's find a sub 0 first, the DC term. a sub 0 is equal to 1 over the period times the integral from 0 to t. Notice that normally you could say it's 2 over the period times the integral from 0 to t over 2, but I'm going to write it like this. It makes it a little bit easier. And that means it's going to be equal to f of t times dt. Now f of t can be found by realizing that this is like a straight line. This is like a y equals mx plus b line where the slope is the rise over the run. That means the rise is a, the run is t, and then the variable is small t. So the function is the slope times t, and therefore we can substitute that in here. This is equal to 1 over the period times the integral from 0 to t of the function a over t times t times dt. Of course, the a over t can come outside the integral sign, so this is equal to a over t squared times t integrated, which is t squared over 2, and that is evaluated from 0 to t. Notice when we plug in the upper limit, we get the following. We get this is equal to a over t squared times t squared over 2 minus when plug in the lower limit, but then we just get 0. So we can, we can forget about that. So this is equal to a over 2. Uh, let me draw a line like this to realize that this is part of this equation, not part of the drawing over there. All right, next we want to find b sub n. Remember that a sub n does not exist because of the pseudo function property of this sawtooth wave. So we don't have an a sub n, but we do have a b sub n. And to find b sub n, that is equal to 2 over t times the integral from 0 to t. Remember, normally with a out function, we write 4 over t times the integral from 0 to t over 2, but I'm going to do, do it like this because it's a pseudo out function. And that would be equal to the function f of t times the sine of n omega t dt. When we plug in what that function is equal to, we have it over here. So this becomes equal to 2 over t times the integral from 0 to t of the function a over t times t times the sine of n omega t dt. Simplifying that a little bit more by taking this outside integral sign, so this can be equal to the integral, or I should say 2a over t squared times the integral from 0 to t of t times the sine of n omega t dt. All right, now we're ready to integrate that, but we should realize that this can only be integrated using the integration by parts. So let's do that, so we can say that let u equals t, du equals dt, 
and dv can be written as the sine of n omega t dt and therefore v would be the integral of that which is minus 1 over n omega times the cosine of n omega t because the derivative sign is the positive cosine so the integral of the sign is the negative cosine all right when we plug that in here we can say that v sub n is equal to 2 over t times oh actually let me do it like this I have not just 2 over t let me take out 2a over t squared times u times v so we get t times a negative 1 over n omega I'm going to write omega as 2 pi over t so put the t at the top times the cosine the cosine of n omega which is 2 pi over t times t evaluated from 0 to t and then the integral is going to be equal to minus the integral from 0 to t of v du that would be 1 over n omega I have a negative sign that makes that a positive times the cosine of n omega t times dt so this will be v du and close the brackets now let's evaluate it, this portion right here hmm when we plug in the lower limit we plug in 0 for t here the whole thing becomes 0 so we don't have to do that but when we plug in the upper limit t and t notice then the t's cancel out we have an integer number times 2 pi and we take the cosine of that the cosine of the integer number of 2 pi will always be equal to 1 with this negative here it would be negative 1 and so what we need to do then is make this a positive I'm sorry let it, yeah negative here and multiply the times this so we have b sub n is equal to 2a over t squared times let's see here plug in the t over here so we have minus t squared over n times 2 pi times the cosine of 2 pi which is always equal to 1 so times 1 plus that integral right there which is 1 over n omega times the integral from 0 to t of the cosine of n omega t dt all right we're almost there so we already have a contributing term from this part let's see what this will give us now when we integrate that this will be equal to 2a over t squared times minus t squared over n 2 pi plus 1 over now when we integrate that we get 1 over n squared omega squared times the integral of cosine is the sine of n omega which is 2 pi over t times t evaluated from 0 to t but here we already had suspected that this will probably be 0 because first of all when plug in the upper limit these cancel out we have the sine of n times 2 pi which is 0 plug in the lower limit the sine of 0 0 so this term does not contribute anything it remains at 0 in other words the b sub n term now the b sub n is equal to this multiplied times this because this whole thing goes to 0 so this becomes equal to the t's cancel out minus 2a divided by n times 2 pi the 2's cancel out this is minus a over n times pi so this is the b sub n coefficients and we have the a sub 0 finally we're ready now to plug that into our original equation to get the Fourier series of the sawtooth wave I'm running out of board space but I think I can probably squeeze it in right here so taking this and plugging it in here we can now say that f of t in the Fourier series is equal to a sub 0 which was a over 2 and this will become minus the infinite sum of n equals 1 to infinity of the b sub n term already brought the minus sign out so this would be a over 
n times pi times the sine of n omega t and let's go ahead and write it like this. Now we probably want to write that slightly different because a and pi are constants. We probably want to write that outside the summation sign. So to refine it a little bit more, we can say that f of t is equal to a over 2 minus a over pi times the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n times the sine of n omega t. And that will probably be a better way to write the final Fourier series of the sawtooth wave. And that's how we do that. Let me move out of the way so you can take a final picture of what that looks like. It's kind of messy, but that's how we do that.